Vladimir Putin is trying his best to hide the details of his rogue plan to rule Russia for an indefinite period of time, just like the Kim Dynasty of North Korea. The people of North Korea are cut off from the rest of the world and know nothing about the advancements of the Western world. If you take a look at the comparative facts of North Korea with South Korea, or the rest of the world for that matter, then you'll realize the true doctrine of the Kim Dynasty and how they plan to extend their rule in North Korea. Unfortunately, Putin is following the same path of isolation and extending his rule over the Russian population by cutting off all ties with the rest of the world. The Western sanctions following the Russian invasion of Ukraine have made it impossible for Russia to import what it needs. Foreign investors are staying away from the Russian Federation. Thousands of the country's elites have emigrated, and the price of its main exports have sunk badly. There's no doubt that the Russian President Vladimir Putin's war has isolated his country. The great shut-off of the Russian economy is accelerating with every passing day, as Moscow is trying to move closer to the North Korean economic model. This move may allow Putin to complete his task of devising a regime where nobody can replace him. But the question everyone in Russia is asking is whether it can cover up the cracks in the Russian economy and save them from entering into a foreseeable catastrophe. No one can answer this positively, because the ground reality is telling a horrible story for the Russian economy, not only for this year, but also for many upcoming years. On the face of the economic complexity, the simplest reality which tells the Russian future is that Russia can't sell its oil and it can't use its ruble for foreign trade. The invasion of the Ukraine has inflicted many damages on the Russian economy, which solely depends on the export of oil and gas. Though high prices of oil and gas in early 2022 helped the country in saving it from steep decline, once the rest of the world adjusted itself in the dependence on the Russian exports, well, the cracks in the Russian economy became prominent. These adjustments by the dependent countries include moving around supplies, and in some cases like the United States, exporting more to the rest of the world. The price of Russia's Urals crude oil has already fallen over 50% from its March 2022 peak. In addition to this, the European Union, the G7, and Australia have also put a $60 per barrel price cap on Russian seaborne oil. This price cap on Russian seaborne oil may mark the beginning of the end for Putin's economic strategy. As a result of all this, the majority of economists are thinking that the Russian economy will take a hard hit during 2023. Not only economists, the International Monetary Fund has also revised its outlook for Russian economic growth. In October of 2021, the International Monetary Fund predicted Russia's economy would grow 2% in 2023. Now, the agency sees the country's GDP falling by 2.3% in 2023 after shrinking 3% in 2022. Based on the ruble's 2022 exchange rate, that translates into some $200 billion in lost GDP. This $200 billion will add a lot of pain to Russia, which is facing already worsening finances. Russian spending has jumped more than 20% in 2022, mostly because of an increase in defense outlays, estimated at some $53 billion. This huge financial leakage has compelled the Russian government to raid a rainy day fund to make up for the first budget deficit in years. And now, it's become difficult to keep the ruble convertible into other currencies. Putin has already tightened his government's control of the economy, demanding to sign off on the sale of assets by Western companies in the banking and energy sectors. State-owned companies or banks, or Kremlin-friendly oligarchs, such as Mikulnagnate Vladimir Potanin, have already bought banking or industrial assets on the cheap, and the trend will only intensify. On December 3rd, 2022, a major development in Western sanctions on Russia came in the form of a price cap for Russian oil at $60 per barrel. The European Union, the G7, and Australia have put the price cap on crude oil, petroleum oils, and oils obtained by bituminous minerals which originate in or are exported from Russia. Since February, the Kremlin, for all its calling and carping about any such price caps being an unacceptable violation of its sovereignty, has already been exporting its oil at substantial discounts. Therefore, in real terms, a cap of $60 is just an effort to make the existing arrangement permanent. The West will implement the cap simply by refusing to provide essential services, such as ship brokerage and insurance for Russian crew that sold above the limit. In one way or another, 
This price cap will limit how much Russia can earn from selling its oil abroad while keeping crude flowing in the global market. And Russia could now lack the resources to cushion the blow of the economic consequences on its population. But how long it will take to start effects, it's a matter of time. In all the economic pain, Moscow only has itself to blame for this sad state of affairs. When he launched the war against Ukraine and decided to take on the international economic order, President Putin made several grave miscalculations. First and foremost was, of course, his deadly and devastating misreading of Ukraine. Putin thought that the Russian troops would be welcomed by most Ukrainians, and his special military operation would end in victory in a matter of days. His second miscalculation was the extent of Russia's ability to disrupt the international economic order without facing pushback. He assumed that his country's influence over the energy market would allow him to easily fracture the West and prevent his adversaries from agreeing to multilateral measurements, such as the price cap, that could severely limit his ability to wage economic warfare. But Russia is in no position to take on the West economically. To address this crippling dependency and blunt oil sanctions, the Kremlin has sought to swiftly build a so-called shadow fleet to transport its own crude. That shadow fleet also found itself dependent on Western services, such as the insurance nations require to be in place to accept oil shipments and thus subject to sanctions. To avoid being dependent on multinational insurers who comply with Western sanctions, Putin's Kremlin has sought to develop its own insurance. But many nations, most notably China and Turkey, have refused to accept this Russian workaround insurance. The impact of Chinese and Turkish denial was significant given the former is Russia's principal purchaser, and the latter is the country that controls the Bosphorus, which is the Russian export's primary way out of the Black Sea. Neither Beijing nor Ankara is a member of the West's sanctions regime, let alone its price cap. China almost certainly could use its own insurance giants to help Russia mitigate some of the pain, but it's not willing to do so. Despite declaring its relationship with Moscow has risen to the level of friendship without limits on the eve of the war, Beijing has since revisited this position. The New Deal is that Beijing will not actively help Russia to undermine the sanctions, though it won't enforce them either, as it is realized that Putin's aim to destroy the international economic order clashes with its own desire to displace Washington and rise to the top. In short, it is very happy to lock in the discount for Russian crude precipitated by Russia's war, and which the oil price cap seeks to make permanent. Putin's increasing isolation and realization that his supposed friends are not real allies may cause him to lash out. The one arrow left in Russia's oil quiver is to throttle exports to all markets. Doing so, however, runs the risk of burning the few bridges the Kremlin still has, given the likely impact of such a move on international oil prices. And Saudi Arabia, which has been cooperating with Moscow through OPEC Plus to keep oil prices from falling too far, could seek to take advantage of the situation. It is worth mentioning that their partnership nearly collapsed in 2020 in a fight for market share that sent prices negative within a month as Riyadh's ability to ramp up production is far greater than Russia's. It's already been positioning itself for a greater role in Europe's energy markets by investing in Poland's refinery network. All in all, this price cap on Russian crude marks a turning point in the economic war between Russia and the West. Of course, this war is still far from over, and we will likely experience many more disruptions caused by it in the near future. But it is increasingly looking like the beginning of the end for Putin's ambitions to uproot the world economic order.